After Half-Life went from laughingstock to market leader, Valve Software was under a lot of pressure to deliver a worthy successor. After various delays and fiascos, Half-Life 2 finally released and lived up to its lineage every bit. For most companies, once they have a killer franchise established, they continue to crank out games according to the same formula over and over. But staying safe just wouldn't be Valve style. Instead of diving straight into production on Half-Life 3, Valve decided to make a few expansions to Half-Life 2. This in itself isn't too far out of the ordinary, but while they were working on it, Valve realized that they had an opportunity here to experiment with the very way that developers develop and consumers consume their gaming experiences. Normally, a studio makes a big budget title that lasts for tens of hours and costs around $50 to $60. These games take quite a while to make, usually two to three years, or six in the case of Half-Life 2. But Valve wondered, what if they took the already developed Source engine from Half-Life 2 and only upgraded it marginally, and developed a much shorter running game in a much quicker time frame, and then released it for only $20? The result was a standalone expansion referred to by Valve as an episode, cleverly titled Half-Life 2 Episode 1. The way in general that we think of pricing is that pricing is another service opportunity. You should sort of give people a bunch of choices so that they can select between them as opposed to view pricing as a mechanism of extracting the maximum amount of revenue from a subset of customers. Episodic approaches like we've been using with the Half-Life franchise are a step towards these more regular, smaller uh, content chunks. Episode 1 picked up right where Half-Life 2 left off, revealing the aftermath of the original game's cliffhanger ending. Building off the graphics and physics engine of HL2, as well as keeping the game in City 17 again, the development team could quickly go from conception to execution since they didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Released only a year and a half after Half-Life 2 for a measly 20 bucks, Episode 1 delivered a taut six-hour campaign that brought hero Gordon Freeman back to a city devastated by his actions in the last game. The game didn't particularly drive the story forward and featured mostly the same enemies and as such was more of an epilogue to HL2 than a title that could stand on its own. The containment system's back in place. It won't last forever, but at least we've bought a little time. Nevertheless, the game sold well as hordes of Half-Life fans got to play a new adventure so soon after the last one. After Episode 1's commercial success, everyone expected Episode 2. What they got was the Orange Box. The Orange Box was a collection of five games for the price of one, the already released Half-Life 2 and Episode 1, and the new game's Episode 2, long-awaited sequel Team Fortress 2, and the puzzle game Portal, all only a year after Episode 1 had been released. It was a move no one saw coming. Valve was gambling that the incredible deal offered by the Orange Box would wind up generating more sales than simply releasing each game individually at full price. When we have a new IP like Portal that we want to, you know, try out, uh, and we want to, you know, we'd like to be able to experiment with it, the Orange Box gave us a vehicle for doing that. You know, we had Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and Team Fortress 2, which we knew had would have strong audiences that would uh, then give Portal a try, and that that gave us a way of getting Portal into as many people's hands as possible. And even if Portal was a total failure, it's a puzzle game, for God's sakes. You know, puzzle games, I think, have sold, you know, seven copies in the history of the, the PC industry. The compilation was a smash hit, with a little something for everybody. It also proved that Valve could produce multi-platform titles, since the box came to Windows and Xbox 360 simultaneously. Sadly, the company found the PS3 too difficult to code for, and so Sony's console did not get the orange box until a third party could develop a port for it. Episode 2 takes the player and ever-trusty sidekick Alex outside of City 17 with new locales to explore and new enemies to negotiate with.
It is, again, a six-hour campaign, though with quite a bit more variety and story than the first episode. Team Fortress 2 decided to go for a heavily stylized, fun approach, making for a cartoony shooter with wildly different class types to choose from. Portal, meanwhile, was one of the most innovative big-budget titles of the decade. A first-person shooter puzzler that completely changes the way you think about space. And though the game is a mere three hours long, its mind-bending gameplay, psychology-twisting nemesis, and ending theme song have already made the game a legend in gaming circles. I'm making a note here, huge success. With the release of the expected Episode 2 and the unexpected Team Fortress 2 and Portal, everyone wondered what Valve would be bundling with Episode 3. But Valve broke expectations once again, turning their attention away from Half-Life and onto a brand new IP that had been quietly announced almost a year previously. A horror game that would make even headcrabs look downright friendly. Tune in next time to see how Valve turned horror into the ultimate party game.